Hi everyone, it's uh, Jason here at the Centre for Computing History. Now I've got for you today a video uh, that is a long time coming. I know that a lot of you have been waiting uh, for us to do this um, and I have here in my hands a USB stick with the Spectrum prototype ROM image on it. Um, now this is something that we had to get permission for uh, to make available and I can tell you that it is now available to download on our website. If you go to the uh, ZX Spectrum prototype page, you'll find a link to it on there. Um, you'll be able to download it and have a play with it yourself. So let's take a look at it. Um, I've got the ROM image on this stick. I have my trusty uh, retro Panasonic Toughbook, um, complete with original Microsoft mouse. Well, not original, but you know, one of the earlier ones. Um, and um, basically we're gonna load it up into a hex editor, have a look at the file contents, um, see if it works in an emulator. Um, and um, then let you guys work out what the differences are between the actual released ROM uh, and uh, the one that we have here. Okay, so I've taken the USB stick and um, put the file onto the machine into my documents and and I have called it prototype. Um, well, that's what it's called. It's a 16K ROM image, as you can see there. Um, I've also got a, uh, an emulator loaded onto the machine. Um, now at the moment, it is using the standard uh, ROM image, the standard 48K ROM image. So if we go to hardware, um, computer model, ZX Spectrum 48K. Okay, and we can go file, open, uh, Hungry Horace. And you can see there it's loading Horace now. That'll take a little bit of time, so I'm going to stop it doing that. But anyway, we can see that the system is using the original ZX48K ROM. Let's close that. Right, so the ROM it uses is here, ZX-S48, also a 16K ROM. So that's the one that the system uses to boot up from. Let's just rename this original. Okay. So that's now renamed so that there is no ZX 48K ROM there to the system. Now, if we now load that up, um, it just jumps out because it can't find the ROM. And we're going to take the ZX prototype ROM and I'm going to name that to um, ZX S48. Okay, so that basically now that ROM. Uh, is what the emulator sees as the 48k ROM or the standard ROM that goes in the specy. So now if we open the emulator, yay. So the prototype ROM does seem to at least basically work. Um, copyright 1982 Sinclair Research. Um, no great shakes. It's, it's not like it's um, anything particularly different. Uh, you can type in 10, print, Oh, hello. Control P. I've got to remember what the keys are on the old Spectrum. R to run. Hello. Um, 20. Go to 10. Enter. Run. Hello. Right. So, basically the ROM image does seem to work. But are we sure this is actually loading from that original ROM image? Or sorry, from the prototype ROM image, I should say. Let's close that. Let's do something to the prototype ROM in here, if I can find it. It's now called ZX S48, isn't it? Because we've just renamed it. Can't even find it. There it is, ZX S48. So this is the prototype ROM. Um, I'm going to load up a program which is called a hex editor. Um, now, this program allows me to look at all the binary uh, contents of a file. If we go to open, and remember we've renamed the prototype one to ZX48. There. Let's open that. Okay, this is the binary data that's stored in the EEPROM. This is the hexadecimal values that are in each position of the ROM, uh, and this is the ASCII decoded version of it. Um, you can see here we've got some of the um, language commands here. So these are the uh, keywords used in, in basic. Uh, you've got print and border and various other ones there. Close. Um, 
So this is all gobbledygook because actually what it is, it's the uh, binary version of the, uh, basically the assembly language code um, that was written to be the operating system. So a lot of it you're not going to be able to see there. You'd have to reverse engineer it to get back to the mnemonics and the data. But for now, we're just having a quick nose through. Can't see anything there. So at this line here, um, start tape, then press play. Program, uh, number array, character array. So these, these are some of the messages that you see uh, when you're working with the spectrum. Can't see anything great shakes there. Here's some more, these are some more error messages coming up here. Um, invalid color, break into program, RAM top, uh, FN without def. So if you're a spectrum programmer, you're going to recognize a lot of these um, messages. Okay, so let's modify this um, so that we can be sure that this is definitely the ROM that we are loading into our emulator. If we go to search and then find, let's find the word Sinclair within this ROM. And here we go. So at this location here, you can see it's 1982 Sinclair Research Limited. Let's change that. Let's change that to 2020 space. Um, I don't know how many of the characters is in that. We need another space. Uh, Jason's Research Limited. Okay, so I've just changed that message. I'm only changing the ASCII data here. Um, I'm not going to go and mess around with anything down here, any of this code, because that is going to corrupt it. Um, so this is just going to change that little message. So let's go File, Save. And we can now close this. And we can go to our Spectrum Emulator ROM here. So, let's load again. Don't want to do that. So starting up. Here we go, copyright 2020, Jason's Research Limited. So this is definitely loading um, from the prototype ROM, which is interesting. Uh, that means that prototype ROM was fairly well formed. There's a lot of the functionality uh, there. Um, let's write ourselves a little program, 10, print, um, roto type ROM, and then control P for the other speech marks. 20, go to 10, run, boom. So that's not bad. So the original prototype ROM is actually fairly functional. Let's now see if it will load the game. So we're loading Hungry Horace from a uh, tape file. Um, and it certainly seems to be going through the motions at the moment. This will take a little while. What I'm probably going to do is a cut in the video here mm -hmm. and make it look like it's a lot quicker than it actually has. Hungry Horace was really quite tricky. And Horace goes skiing as well. That was quite a brutal game. Quite tricky to master. But I gave it plenty of attention and, and tried my best to master it. So there you go. Hungry Horace has loaded and seems to play. Um, oh, the keys. Ouch. Oh, so up and down. Ah. So up, left and right. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, no. So certainly this ROM is functional enough to, to play Hungry Horse. I think that's enough. Let's, uh, can we reset this? How do we reset it in here? Hardware reset. Boom. So there you go. That's the um, ZX Spectrum prototype ROM uh, loaded into emulator in all its glory. It does seem to be mostly functional. So let's just do uh, one final check. Um, we have the uh, original ZX ROM um, that come with this emulator and we have the prototype one. I've just put the original, the very original prototype one back on. So we're back now to the version um, that I haven't messed around with. Uh, and let's load up our hex editor. Now we can open in here two files at once. So we can take a look at um, the prototype ROM. So there that is. And we can open up the original ZX48 ROM. That's the one that I renamed. I also spelled original ROM, but hey. Um, so that's the, the ROM that came with the, um, the emulator. 
you've got the two files there. So that's the original one, starts F3 AF11, um, goes to the prototype, and already there's a difference right at the very, very first um, bytes in the ROM, 11 FFFF, you know, a, a byte zero. We've got uh, um, differences there. Uh, and if we just flick between them, you can see that the uh, commands, uh, the basic commands there, are changing. Just flipping between the two. So that's interesting. So there are differences between the prototype ROM and the released one that, that come with this emulator at least. But what they are, I do not know. So that's for you to find out. We're going to leave it with, in the hands of the uh, dedicated Spectrum community now. And maybe you can tell us what the differences are between these, these ROMs. So I hope you found that interesting. Uh, go and download the ROM, uh, have a look. And uh, if you like what we're doing, then please do help support the museum. We are a charity and uh, we need all the support we can get. So you can go to the website. There's a donate button in the top bar of the website. Please do donate via any of the, the methods that are up there. We would really appreciate your support. I'd just like to uh, take this opportunity to say a special uh, thanks to Kate and John Grant who uh, donated the prototype Spectrum to us. Um, really, really significant part of our collection. John was responsible for writing uh, the Spectrum Basic ROM um, well, and the ZX81 ROM as well for that matter. So we really appreciate that he's made it available for us to put online and share with you guys. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of other videos to do and release over time, so uh, you'll get a notification then of when they come out. Also, don't forget to check out our other channel, Retro Tech Archive. Um, that's behind the scenes at the museum. Some fun videos on there about some of the items we have in the collection. Check that out. If you like this kind of stuff, you'll love that channel. So there you go. The file's on the website for you to download. Go to the ZX Spectrum prototype page. It's there for you to download. Have fun.